Hello and welcome to PM Personality Profile. My name is Nana Ansakwa the Fourth. And as I do every Friday, I come to your homes through the magic of television with the personality whose life there is something in there for us to emulate. You know, somebody who's lived an exemplary life. Uh, today, the gentleman I'm bringing, I've asked people and everybody's in love with him, particularly the women. Everybody loves him. Yet, they don't know why they love him. Well, he's a good singer, but they can't put a finger on it. I am hoping that by the end of this interview, we can all put a finger on why he is such a darling boy. Indeed, he's a very charming man, my old schoolmate in Accra Academy, or well, my senior. Folks, I'm going to take a break. When I come back, I'm talking to Daniel Nete. Don't move. Well, thank you very much for staying. Folks, as I said, today we are talking to our nation's darling boy, our one and only favorite gospel singer, Daniel Nete. For the purposes of the interview, what do I call you? Danny? Danny, Danny Nete? Danny is good. Danny is good, yeah? Yes, it is. I'll start from, why? Well, I mean, all the women. I was asking you. No, you were just saying, how would I know? <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you, might, you may have bumped into a couple or two. But, you know, normally if I have a personality and I'm going to interview, you know, I talk to people, oh, I have this personality, I'm talking to this Friday, all excited. And then I get reactions from them, you know. And with you, everybody says, oh, I love him. Oh, I just love him. Oh, I just love him. But nobody's been able to put a finger on why they love you other than that they just love you. I, I, I guess it's good because if you know why you love somebody, if that thing finishes, the love goes. So okay. I guess it's good love. But, okay. you know, can you... <laughs> so how would I know why they love you? <laughs> I don't, I don't have a clue. Um, of course, once in a while you come across some, uh, should I call it pa pa pa? A little bit of um, a crazy scenario, situation, and um, you need to address it. Mm -hmm. Then, then um, somebody stops in the middle of the road and goes like, "Can I have your baby?" I'm like, ah, yeah. you know, it's, it's crazy. You don't know, um, but I guess being able to do what you do. How you do when you do sometimes um, it makes it all so easy and worth admiring. So I I, I can understand that. Well, we'll, gi we'll, gi we'll give the uh, the glory to God. Definitely. And then we'll, I'm, I'm going to reverse all the way back to Senior Nete, the evangelist himself. Okay. Who was he like? Your dad? Yeah, my dad, good man, yeah. um, very responsible, took care of his family. Um, fortunately, passed out passed away before we all grew up. So I remember I was in Form 1 when I was told in school that he was gone. Um, but he, he made everything so easy. You know, of course, um, his, his kind of line of work made sure that he could provide for the family. Um, it wasn't stuff that was being done back then, but he was a little hard on himself and he got he, he he was an undertaker, a coroner as you as it were. Okay. You know, so the funeral homes, the hiring of chairs and everything, he started it all way back in the day. Ah. You know. So um I love being with him. It, it was difficult letting him go. Mm. I mean, even if after he had died, yeah. and why would I say that his birthday is um the eighteenth of September, mine is the nineteenth. Oh dear. Yo, so every day just before my birthday I can but to remember that he was there mm -hmm. and what he would do would be to, you know, uh, uh, make sure he delayed celebrating his and then we, we celebrate it together. It means that I get to choose to give who what I want, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he would buy all the things there. The sunspot. I don't know if you yeah. remember sports, uh, sunspot. Of course, I remember day, sunspot. You know, <laughs> fan mail, chunk, I mean, I all those stuff. bring it back. Yeah, you know. So um, I remember him fondly. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I I used to have issues with temper, and I would really? just fly up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fly up and you know just throw my left punch and right punch here and there. And he sat me down one day and said, you know what, I've been, th I've been through all of that. It doesn't give you anything, it doesn't, but worries and pain. So um, sometimes you need to take a walk. Somebody, you know, says the wrong stuff instead of engaging in whatever. And I took the advice. It worked. It's definitely working because you look very sober now. 
I know. I mean, my, my, my mother that. was the one who would, we, we would comment on it. <laughs> you know, all the days I went by the house and I had this one shirt I was going to perform somewhere. And then I gave it to my nephew to iron it. And the first thing I heard was, ouch, I knew something was wrong. He had actually used the iron and, you know, because it was in the night, yeah. the shirt was a little on the silky side. Yeah. He had messed it up. He had burnt it. So he goes like, um, Uncle Danny, I burnt your shirt. I'm like, okay, looking through the suitcase and see if I can get anything. So the next day, my mom calls me and goes like, wow, you know you have changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? And she's wow. like, yeah, all hell would have broken loose <laughs> if it was back in the day. But that's what God can do in one's life. So, I see. Know, yeah. I see. How about mommy? How is she? Who is she? She, 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 uh, she's, she's still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, she's still home. She's home. Um, nice, sweet woman. I, I actually kind of thought that, you know, I picked the music from her because she was singing every day. I see. Any day, anywhere. She, you, any church activity. Somebody can sing a song. She raised her hand, go sing a hymn, you know. And so I kind of thought, I, 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 I found that. My dad actually used to play the guitar, and he was really good at it. Mm -hmm. But my mom loves to sing. I remember um, when Ron Kelly came to Ghana the second time at Christ Temple. You know, I was outside. We were getting ready to go into sing, and Ron had sung and sang, started a hymn or two, went around giving the mic, and I heard a voice. I was like, oh, my goodness, that's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she would sing for no reason, for every reason. Um, interesting part is where when I started writing, she would be like, oh, that's a fake song, it doesn't exist. I'm like, but that's how they write it. She's every, every day you fake, you fake a song, you know. <laughs> and then one day she heard me on Joy singing a, a song from an album and she's like, was that really you? I was like, yeah, the fake singing turned into something, right? Um, I, I've always seen her as my prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day when adrenaline was all over the place, you know, visiting girlfriend here and there, come back middle of the night and she's on her knees praying. You know, I'm like, wow. um, if, if she didn't do anything right, I know she did that right. She, she covered me with her prayers and wow. her love. Wow. But you started writing as early at six. Yes. So you put little words together and try and make a song out of it? Yes. I mean, I'm tempted to say why. Yeah, I know. I mean, for me, growing up, now that, now that I, I, I'm doing it, mm -hmm. I guess um, I can say that for every one of us, you know, when the Bible talks about train up a child in a way you should go mm -hmm. and will not depart from it when he's old. You know, most of us think he's taking the cane and beating up the child, but the parents for me, if you read the Amplify, the parents are actually supposed to find out what the leaning and bent the child has. Some children, you see that they are natural leaders. You begin to work on that. Mm -hmm. For some of us, I mean, I started singing melodies with no words and with words that didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I, I guess, you know, that should have been the cue. But mm -hmm. you know, on this side of the divide, um, the arts, you know, back in the day was not really taken no, serious. No. It's still taking time to develop. Um, but that was the passion, you know. Anytime we had a big hall, living room, dining room, separated by a big curtain. Uh, ask me if that curtain is still big, it's not. But <laughs> because we're children, we saw it as something huge. And my cousins who come over from next door, and we will do plays and recitals. And I always found myself singing, mm. you know. So um, looking at it, I guess that that's the way I'm wired. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I can I can look at you and write a song like now. It's a, it's a crazy bit. We'll get a pen and paper and see. What, no, no, what I don't my... need pen and paper. Really? I wonder I wonder what my song would be. <laughs> what, what, would it be a good song? I wouldn't try. You don't want to go. Really? <laughs> go on. Go on. Give me the first cue of my song. He's got a smile. He's got a smile. And going to turn something into a... Something like that. Well, I agree. I have swag. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I walked in, that was the first thing I noticed. Like, you know... 
<laughs> he got something going on and a huge smile. I, I mean, y'all can see, right? <laughs> so I see. I thought, well, you're wired that way. You're wired, wired that, wired that way. way. Now, you, you, you mean you're three, you're third born out of six. Did you have to, you know, I mean, that's in the middle of You have to fight and defend. <laughs> and the fight and defend, I already said that, um, was because um, the rest of the six, um, we are seven. Mm -hmm. You know, the rest of the six, um, it's five girls and one, one boy. And you know how it happens when the women take over. Mm -hmm. Especially dad is gone. Uh, mom joins with the women. And so you have all they, mother, they, all the mothers. dictation goes on. <laughs> um, you are not there when we're pounding the fufu. You're not eating. You know, so yes, on, the, on that side, from the beginning was a fight. Until I learned how to handle, know that they are women, they always be women, and they, they are just the way they are, you know, and talking doesn't naturally translate to action for mm -hmm. them. It's just letting you know that, hey, you need to be there when we're all doing it, so you can participate as well. Um, I love them dearly. It, was, it wasn't much of a struggle. If you ask me, I think they've been of tremendous help when it comes to my career, because when I started traveling, it wasn't like... Um, you you had made a name and you need to be out there so your tickets and everything is bought. So when they when the avenue opens up, they are the ones that bought the that bought the tickets back in the day. And beautiful part is where they will not even ask for a refund, mm. and you could tell that they believe in their brother. So um, even to date, like I have this my Christmas shows or whatever whichever show they show up. They make sure they buy the tickets. They don't ask for freebies. Wow. Exactly. Wow. So that, that tells you. Wow, that's a good bond. I think she, she said there's always something that we can pick from this. <laughs> <laughs> that's a you good know, bond. Yeah. So how many nieces and nephews? Nieces and nephews. Um, count, count, count. <laughs> um, th three, three, one, two, and three. Your maths is good, right? Yeah, that's just good, but three, I lost three, count. Three, Twelve. Two, twelve. Twelve. Oh, is there anyone called Joseph in there? Joseph? Yeah, since they're twelve, I mean, you must have one Joseph in <laughs> there. And then, you know, you're, you're um, set with the twelve tribes. No, there's, there's um, Oswin, I, I, Oswin just, Justin, yeah. Cassandra, Vanessa, Joshua, um, Michael, um, uh, Giovanna, Brianna, Adrino, and um, a Rama angel. Don't miss anyone out. Though. No, otherwise, I haven't. Otherwise, you I trouble. haven't. Okay. I haven't. <laughs> otherwise, you're I, I, I arranged it in the order of who is the eldest, <laughs> the eldest is and then there's their children in, in that it's, order. It sounds like a close knit family. It is. Really um, one of the things we we learned to laugh at each other at a very early age. Dad mm -hmm. wouldn't let us go out. So that like that's how come we would do recitals with cousins coming over and everything. Mm -hmm. You know. So um, it got to a point, I remember we'll pick on one person for like a week or two, oh, all your goofs will be brought to bear and we'll <laughs> laugh at you. I mean, you're able to endure it because you know next <laughs> week it will be the other person's <laughs> thing and you go and dig all the juicy stuff. So we learn to depend on each other and, you know, love, love each other. Um, we still do. Um, I hear being the elders, but I'm supposed to travel around where everybody is and check on them. I, I'm yet to find out if that's feasible. <laughs> but I love, like I said, I love them to bits. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very, very much there for you when you need them. Mm -hmm. And so you are forced to be there when they need you. All through school, I mean, in Accra Academy, I knew, I knew you were, you know, SU and all that. But at the time, did you know you were going to pursue music as a professional? Um, finally I did, but initially no. Mm. You know, um, I did the sciences. I did um, A level, I did physics, chemistry, biology. You know, meaning I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> you know, but then I realized that the passion for music was way too strong. Wow. I wow. woke up with songs. The songs woke me up sometimes. Um, I could, I learned how to play without formal tuition. It was just that all I need to do is hear the song, get on the keyboard, and I replay it. You so know. you just listen to the keys? Just and listening, and that's it. You know. So um, I, I, knew there was, I knew there was a challenge when 
A level, instead of being in the physics lab, I find myself in the piano room. And I had the key to the piano room. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was head prefect uh-huh. in scripture, you know, president, so I had that access, you know. So, um, one, he's now a reverend, Mr. Subontin, who was teaching us biology, called me aside and said, you know, your physics is suffering, so you better sit up or, you know, find out what's up. Um, praying through, working through, I realized that if I could follow the passion, it would lead me somewhere because... I heard from somewhere that passion is the key to success. So what you're passionate about can actually push you. And uh, I would say that I've come thus far. I'm going to take a break here. And then on a note that passion will push you this far. We want to find out how far passion pushed him. Don't move. Thank you very much for staying. But uh, there are other things which I think we'll keep it off screen. But they were quite interesting. Not too bad, <laughs> just very, maybe too interesting for camera. But I think that he said something which is really important, passion. You know, because I always say that you have to have passion in whatever it is that you do. Because that's why somebody gives an excuse that oh, it was raining so I couldn't come and the other one turns up. Those who have passion turn up whether it's raining or not. So I just want to find out. It's good you had your passion, but did you know you would come this far when you were pursuing your music? Um, just like we started by saying that passion actually gives you sustaining power. Mm. You know, I knew it was something good. Um, the applause was good. Mm-hmm. Um, the invites to the different programs was good. And when I started, it wasn't just... Um, I, I think even though there were churches that I was known for doing what I do, um, the shoot to fame came one, there was a Joyce Abibio show at the uh, Tulip, you know, and um, Bobby, who happens to own New World, was working with Taboo. I don't know if you know Taboo, Andrew, G.I., um, uh, what's his name? Kwame Fach, what's his name? Swift, mm-hmm. you know, and it was right there down in the Salam Down. So he recommended to her that, look, there's this guy who really can saying so she asked me to come and we did it i think chester was the mc just before i walked off stage he was like no 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 you can't go we need to know who you are where have you been where are you from so we talked up and then the next thing i heard him say was ladies and gentlemen that's Ghana's answer to luther vandross because like, oh. <laughs> luther is huge you know he's one of the guys mm-hmm. i i didn't know who he was but i listened to his tapes mm-hmm. a lot and so there was definitely an, an influence in there. So um, knowing that I will end up here, no. But I knew that I loved what I did. And I knew even if I made millions and I didn't have to work, I will still be doing music. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was still something that I would find uh, myself. If you asked me to retire and you gave me um, a house load of money, I will still be writing. I will still be singing. Wow. Now, mentioning Luther Vandross, right? <coughs> Now, I know you do gospel, but I mean, they are, I know, they are certain secular music that are, they're not, they're not evil. Like, I'm, I'm, t- I'm looking at Luton Vendro's song about him and his dad, you know, you, uh, you know, there's a song he sings, you know, me and my dad, you know, we cuddled, we did this. It's not necessarily, you know, gospel, but it's not necessarily evil. Now, with a voice like yours, uh, wouldn't you want to you know, push... And it's, I think it's even good, you know. And I, I listening to you share the birthday with your father and everything. And so, why can't you do something like that? Um, well, I I do. I mean, I I write stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there was this I did with um, what's his name. Um, I did with um, Con- uh, Legacy and Legacy, Albert Okran mm-hmm. and Comfort. You know, they they had this turning point program. And, um, you know, doing what I do on Joy, I read the LPMs a couple of times. And I, I read the stories about people. And I'm like, wait a minute, I can write a song on this. Because already I was actually not just contemplating of people. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of Africa, that we come to a place where we need a turnaround. Mm-hmm. So I went home. I wanted to write, you know. It worked and worked. It didn't happen. So I laid back. When I woke up, it was 2 a.m. And I heard a chorus. You know, no more searching. The light has come. Here's where we turn around. No more delays. 
Time to move on. Here's how it was for me. Africa has all the resources, but we keep squandering our opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just Ghana, it's not just Accra. It is the whole of West Africa, is the whole of Africa mm -hmm. that needs the turnaround. We, we yeah. need to value what we've been given. And when it comes to resources worldwide, Africa has over 90% of what? <laughs> but we still are where we are yeah, because yeah. leadership has issues. So um, that that's needs to be working. So I do write those kind of songs. Mm -hmm. I write songs that are encouraging. I even write love songs. Ah. You know, mm -hmm. here and there you fall in love out of love. Um, it hurts and I write based on my experiences. So uh, before you realize you singing a melody, penning down some lyrics, it hurts but it's going to be all right. You know. Um, Who was it? Who was it? Give me <laughs> Who a name. Was it? Oh, Give me no, a no, name. No, no, no. How could she? How could they? <laughs> <laughs> well, how could the last one? <laughs> you know. Uh, how um, could the last one? Because <laughs> there's, there's this tune actually that sounds like we see your uh, first single, and I told him about it, and he goes like, you know that. Mm -hmm. But I wrote, that was before he even released this, I wrote, Cause when you're gone, my life goes on, I will get through, get over you. Cause after a while, I learn to smile, get over you. You know, and it keeps on and on like that. But those are experiences. As to whether I'll release them, time will tell. Um, there are many people already soaked into I this, know, even this short chorus. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it's sometimes it's, it, it, it ends up where we call, you guys call it branding, mm. right? So you branded yourself in a way and you want to stick to that because that's what people will take you for. And um, maybe a time will come when people mature to the place where you can do some of these, especially yeah. the last one. I mean, as for the inspirational, mm -hmm. I keep writing them and I will never stop. Mm -hmm. I have one that I'm working on that has to do with the unity in, in this country because we are so divided by partisan, yeah. you know, yeah. all that, yeah. you know. So I have a song that says that, you know, we have only one Ghana. Mm -hmm. This is my home. I can't go elsewhere and call it home. This is where I belong. I mean, somebody would say that, but then either what you do, you can be anywhere and be able to, but this is where I love to be. Mm -hmm. This is home for me. And I, I get more inspiration inspiration when I'm home than mm -hmm. when I'm out, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I think that will come through one of the days. I was going to say, ask, uh, go back, and uh, I think you go brushed back, over way, the... Way back into no, 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 way back. Just a little <laughs> back, you know. I think you brushed over the, uh, the love issue. I mean, we, uh, the whole gun is Why is everybody it. wanting to know this love thing? Because we, we are concerned. Ooh, oh, yeah. It's a love thing. <laughs> we are all concerned. Concerned? Yes. Oh, please don't be. I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I asked. I'm good. Because at the end of the day, um, you know how you fall in love. Everybody wants to know because of what you do, how you do, when you do. And quite a number of times, they put pressure on the person. Mm. You know, and <laughs> that has actually messed up a couple or two. I see. Yeah, because mm. um, there's so much pressure and the person now begins to feel, I need to play the role, but I don't need you to play any role, just be yourself. Mm. You know, so even if there is, some, we like to hush hush it. So, but can you say maybe by the end of the year, you know? Could be, yeah. Could be, at least by the end of the year. Let's all keep fingers crossed and pray for. Does it work? Well, <laughs> I guess if we want it to work. I guess if we want it to work. Will the Christian fraternity accept if you come up with a song that's not like biblical? Um, based on my upbringing, even if I sang something you didn't hear Jesus, you can be sure that lyrics will be biblical. I might not quote verbatim, mm -hmm. but listen, the Bible talks about every area of life, every sphere of life about love i mean read kings and books of book of solomon about every area of your life so in other words god is interested in we succeeding at on all fronts mm -hmm. you yeah. know because you will be a failure if you made it and your love life or your life at home is a mess mm -hmm. a man who's made it 
and he's out there life and then back home everything is messed up you really have issues because mm. mm. i mean people are supposed to trust you how can you rule over us if you can't rule over your home mm. and that is a scripture anyway ah. <laughs> how what's the biggest star you've performed with Who's to you? Who's the biggest you've been on stage? I with? don't know what. What I mean. Ah. Okay, which was, which was your proudest moment on, on on stage? Which which was your proudest moment? The wow, either the audience or the person you performed with, or it's it's all been unique. If you ask me, it's all been very unique. Um, been on stage with Ron Winans, he passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, been on stage with Kirk. Um, um, Alvin Slaughter, Patrick Duncan, um, when Bishop T.D. Jakes was here the first time. Mm -hmm. And it was all different. I, you know, you savor the flavor yeah. differently and based on what you're supposed to do. Um, but I think, I think one person that made me really enjoy the moment was Kirk. Okay. You know, because I think he heard me sing before he came up stage. So when, when he was singing, myself and as his dad said, oh, we're hungry. So that was like 90 something. We went to Papaya to get some food. When we came back, as he said, we should go on. I said, no, we should stop through. When we came, um, Kek was like, where's that brother who sang earlier on in the day? Is he gone? And I raised my hand. He said, come over and sing with us. So I did that. Okay. You know, and it was interesting where people thought that that was the best of my singing. I'm like, guys, this is what I do. I can't do best of me <laughs> because it's Kirk, you know. But then he kept talking, and even before they left at the press conference, he still said, he said, that's my best singer, da 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 da. So he made me kind of oh. enjoy the moment. Um, like, you know, somebody thinks something of you and they say it. Mm -hmm. You know, at the others we didn't really get to. I think for Alvin the first time, he asked the organizer a question that kind of validated what we do here. He said, so if you have guys like this, why do you keep inviting us? Wow. You know, and for me, that was to say that we have something to present. Mm -hmm. If they would find it worthy of, you know, mentioning, worthy of mentioning, then believe you me, it means that we can represent wherever we go. That was that was a big plus. Okay, and then uh, I think we all want to know which one is your album, your favorite album. Which they are one? my they are my babies. They are yeah. my offspring. Yeah. I but give if, birth to all of if, them. If we, if we if we were to give you just one, if you're going on a long journey, and you you're allowed one album, I'll take I believe. I guess we all take I believe. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you don't have to say, by the time you get there, we all have one for you. So then I okay. believe, uh -huh. I believe. Um, it was even a song written, I was, I was somewhere, Woodbridge, Virginia, when, you know, get trying to get a bus and the melody. And I was thinking of, I mean, like, why is it that one can be so gifted and yet, you know, you go through a phase where it's like nothing is working. Mm -hmm. And it's like, then why do I have what I have? But there's timing for everything so i kind of had this feeling that the time will come mm -hmm. and when that when that thought and feeling you know flooded my system i kind of said lord i believe and that was what started lord i believe that all things with you all things are possible lord i believe yes i believe it's blessed many if you people ask me i think i can <laughs> i can actually write a sequel to that and say um, i still believe <laughs> i'm going to take a break here but you know i think after the break we're still going to believe don't move well, so, I, I, I like the story about the musician who's uh, picked the, you know, the, you know, scrambled the paper, threw right, it in the bin, picked it up, and, up, and then all of a sudden, it's a hit. you know. Folks, thank you very much for staying, but you know what, behind the scenes we were still talking, but let's let's, let's just go back. You know, before the break, <laughs> select the rewind. You know, let's rewind. Before the break, you were in the US, bus stop, you know, drops on you that, no, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe that if he said it, then he's more than able because I serve a kind of God that knows the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times he throws the end at you and goes like, catch that. 
this is where I'm taking you. But the steps you don't get. So that is on faith. Mm -hmm. You take the steps on a daily basis. And before you realize, is it French? They say voila, something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you are there, yeah. you know. And even that, because you are you're trying to catch up with something that's way out there, your focus is not with the satisfaction of where I am. And you, be, you begin to gloat like, hey, I made it. Because mm -hmm. anytime we stop growing, we start dying. Wow. You know, so you just keep pushing yourself until, like somebody said, you die empty. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one scripture that I love about David, I don't remember whether, I think it's in the book of Romans. It said, David served his generation according to the will of God but before his body saw corruption. So the thing is, for every one of us brought on earth in this dispensation to give up the best, I mean, time is going. If you don't do it now, some, somebody said, I'm waiting to get the right moment. If God is giving you a 10-year ten, ten grace period to do that, and five years is gone, it's gone. You're not going to get it back. Mm -hmm. You know, so the earlier you start now, and that's I also, scary. That's I, scary I know that so you get to the place where you realize that, um, let me speak a little tree, even though my tree is not that mm -hmm. good. It's a mm -hmm. one be one in right? So wow. you do your bit. And for all you know, you're supposed to just lay the foundation for the next generation to pick up and run with it. But sometimes we want to finish everything and we end up not doing anything. Somebody gave this analogy recently that our lives is like getting into a car and getting on the highway. You know, there are other cars that join you. Some are behind you, some by your side, some are ahead of you. If you get distracted looking in the mirror at the ones behind and by your side, you end up not going anywhere because you soon realize that some will overtake you, some will cross, some will do whatever they want to do, but their exit point is different. So are you going to say that this, you're racing with this person when at, at exit B or C or whatever, they get off and you're supposed to keep going mm -hmm. or you get up before they do. But because you're looking at them, you go over your, your, your exit point and you're lost. Yeah. You understand? So we find out that we all have been given an assignment and there's a specific time that we're supposed to. It's relevant when it works within that specific given time. All you need to do is do that. Um, we humans have made everything complex by the way we've defined success. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus lived for three years, and I mean, like for the, the he, thirty years, but three years when he started ministry. So the three years he died. I mean, we keep talking, and the reason why there are Christians and there are things going their way, and even think everything is being named after him, Hanno Domino, whatever, whatever, is because it was impactful. The timing was right. So if you get your timing right, you may be long gone, but your principles will be revisited, and then we will still be working with them. And that, for me, is success, if you ask me. Success is when you're gone and people pick up your stuff and still run with it. I'm sure. I'm sure. Because they say success without a successor is failure. Okay, now I'll come, we're doing I'll it. Come, I'll come back and find out who your successor <laughs> is. But after you're long gone, your music will still be there. But then I want to go to when you went into the studio. But let me reverse before I come back. Now, you see, I know you just said, oh, I did physics, chemistry, biology, but uh, I wanted to do music. Now, a typical Ghanaian parent won't say, ah, Danny, congratulations. I've you chose you, music. I've taken you to school. <laughs> You've done physics, chemistry, biology. There's your guitar. Go and sing. I'm sure. I don't know. I mean, how supportive were they or how, you know, were they in terms of discouraging you? How they, did they happen? They, they didn't take it lightly, you know. Um, the, the, how bad it was was I did secondary education on, on scholarship. Mm hmm you know, um, my dad said to my mom, you know, the money that is due him for school fees, just put it all in the bank for him. Da, 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 da. Unfortunately, he wasn't there to see that. So um, he's gone. We, we had, learned, had to learn how to take care of ourselves, family-wise. So um, I didn't mind mom spending on my sisters and stuff. I knew that um, this was what I was going to do. But before then was this time when mom would come knock on the door and go like i'd like to talk to you and you know what time that is around 3 a.m mm. you know back in the day i don't know if moms and pops you all still do that but <laughs> <laughs> back in the day that's what they do if they want to talk sense into your head do you know so like what she did um i listened to her once twice i realized that i mean i was going to stick to my gun so third time she comes i'm like you know what i'm not opening this door 
I'm going to stick to it. Um, question is, did they come around it? Yes. It took a while because, like I said, she heard me on Joy, Sunny FM, and it's like, there was this time, I mean, like early time, she goes like, so what are you going to wear for this program? There was this Valentine thing I did with Joy FM, I think at Kosombo Hotel or something. You know, and I said, I was going to wear the blue shirt. She's like, but you won't it twice. So now she's in charge of wardrobe, <laughs> you know, making sure that I don't show up anyhow. I mean, and so what, what would she say? I mean, things like, uh, you know, be, finish your doctorate and come and sing or... She did. Uh, she didn't feel like finish the medicine and then you can choose to do whatever. But, but you mean, might think, in was, I'm like, but <clears> that won't be smart. I'll spend seven years on, you know, mm -hmm. doing medical that is if you pass every exam because there are some people that rewrite it and mm -hmm. then afterwards it's like um now i want to do music mm -hmm. for me it didn't make sense maybe it does now um so i you know i shut everybody out mm -hmm. two weeks i was in my i was in the outhouse the boys quarters and i wouldn't talk to anybody it was like i was fasting starving i don't know what it was but I kept praying. I'm like, Lord, I need to understand where this whole thing is going. Around that time, my cousin comes, knocks on the door. He's like, you have a letter. It's from the States. It was this um, advert that I saw in an Ebony magazine saying, mm -hmm. send in your songs or, um, or your poems for a contract, you know. So I had written a song or two. I think I'd sent three. And then they had sent me a contract to use, they want to use you know, two of my songs on a project. Um, Set it back from America? Yes. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, now I'm thinking, if, if it was now, I would have signed the contract. <laughs> but for me, it just validated the fact that I think it, it's okay to me that, whoa, if a company from the U.S. wants your song, you must be good enough. Yeah. So for me, that was where it settled in that I can actually do this and take it somewhere. So then, quickly, I called um, Case Frequency, KK Dua, he's um, may so rest in peace. I asked him if I could work with him, and he's like, you should have said that like yesterday. So he gave me the opportunity. I'd already had a little uh, um, working experience with Zap in the studio. You know, he's like a big brother, you know, mentoring and, you know, tutoring along the way. So I knew how to operate that Atari and the stuff. So. Within one week of being hired at Case Frequency, I was moved because some people wanted to work at night because the studio was booked as far as like three, four months ahead. You know, so what happens is um, I started working nights. I did night for like eight months, mm -hmm. you know, and every night when nobody works, I'll do my demo. Now, you're a sound engineer. Yes, I am. You know, I mean, I'm thinking doctorate, music, sound engineer. How, how did that happen? Yeah, I think it's still all, it's still all on this, on the science part. Well, I guess so. Yeah, because... If it's not biology, it's chemistry, <laughs> if it's not, it's physics. <laughs> you know, you know that somebody, um, Reverend Kofiotri and uh, Reverend Sifasomati, kept going on joy, like, what has music got to do with science? I mean, a science student. Mm. I'm like, music is science, mm. hello. Mm. And they're like, how? I'm like... First, we talk about dynamics, we talk about volume, we talk about sound, we talk about amplitude. And they're like, wait a minute, you're taking this too far. Some of the schools that I had um, the position to go to in the States when I finished A-level, I chose to accept me to do acoustics or sound because my background had physics in it. Okay. You know, so um, it has everything to do with everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think what the brain does is expand based on what you give it. If your brain can become spongy, hello, yeah. you can absorb and you mm -hmm. can apply it in life. I try to call myself the 360 musician, an all-rounder, you hmm. know, so I, I read around. everything and everything I read on, you know, I mean about life. You ask me about South Africa, I, I know a little bit. Mm -hmm. You ask me about Botswana, I've been there, I know a little bit about- talking about all-rounder. You see, when you came in, 
and that style of music you brought. I mean, we were used to Israel like going to, hey, yeah, wah, wah, you know, and then, you know, that. Oh, come on, I love those songs. Hey, yeah, yeah, <laughs> wah. And then you come in with all your swagalicious thing. Weren't you scared if people don't accept it and think, oh, is this mm, biblical? I, I know. Well, I think, I think I had done my homework already. Mm. Um, because, like I said, um, with the likes of Zap and Tom in my life, I noticed that everywhere I mentioned them, because I was so proud of them, mm. I am so proud of them. Everywhere I, I mentioned back in the day, people didn't know who they were. So that was where I started schooling myself about marketing and advertising. Like, mm -hmm. how come people don't know how good these guys are? You know, so now what I started doing was, I would go to the churches, I would make Zap do the soundtracks, I will go through the churches, if I see there's a program going on, I would beg for them to allow me to sing a song or two. No pay, just, and I thought to myself, by so doing, I'll be known at the grassroots level, and by the time I hit, people would already know. Um, that worked, and then again, what worked was the fact that Reverend Tom Bright Davis, who I looked up to, who schooled me in a lot of things, actually had gone ahead of me and told a lot of pastors that there's this guy called Danny, he's this, he's that. And he was the eight of the time, mm -hmm. you know. So eventually when I started going through the churches, they, I constantly heard, oh, you are the one Tom was talking about, you are the one Tom was talking about, you are the one. And I think the rest is history. Wow, wow. And I like that bit, which I think uh, the up and coming should take a more than I wanted to do it for free. Because everybody goes, what, what's in it for me? You of know, course. You, you need to prove it's, yourself before you it's, ask. It's the day, I mean, I mean, um, rightly so, it, it's going to go to a point where um, they wouldn't even need to ask again. Mm. You know, out there, they don't ask. They want you for hire in a church to play keyboards. Um, back in the day when I used to visit frequently and almost stayed, um, the amount, the, almost ongoing, rate, That's the ongoing rate was 250 <laughs> You know, two, so it's, it's very easy, $250. It's mm. very easy. For you to play gig from gig to gig and you know within a, a day you would have done a thousand dollar worth of gig for one sunday but at the end of the day did you listen to the sermon did you grow spiritually it's all about the money so you get to the place where your spirituality is supposed to match up with what's coming and you're found wanting wow. so you, wow. you would you would lose out the thing is what you're going through is preparing you for the next level so i'm let's let's assume this analogy there's a mountain, um, I'm climbing, it's steep, it's difficult, but the solution is climbing on the flip side, trying to meet me at the top. What's, what's, what's new for, for your fans out there? What should they expect? Um, on the immediate, I have a worship program this month in Tema, okay. um, 28th of um, February, mm -hmm. in a like, place called Liberty Hall, Community 12. It's a worship event. It's a free thing I'm trying to do. Um, I haven't been to Tema like that. They kept complaining. Oh, it's only when a church invites you. But I need to get there as Daninete, you know, doing what he does. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I'm looking into going into a couple of TV stuff. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm doing production. And then the music school is supposed to, you know, open up not one or two students anymore, but for... A whole lot of people who want to learn how to play, how to sing, how to play the guitar and the, the keyboards, I mean, especially by ear. Of course, you get a lot of the um, theories because without that, you won't go much f any further, you know. So for me, um, I think those are the things I'm looking at this year, apart from the sporadic um, jump outs and back in. And I must add uh, that every Sunday between 12 and 2 p.m., uh, tune to Joy 99.7 FM and listen to the Worship Zone. The Worship Zone. The Worship Zone and uh, listen to the man himself. Uh, are you keeping it going or you are... Do I look like I'm about to drop? No, you don't look <laughs> no, about no, to drop. No, we no, just no, want no, assurance, no. you know. We, we keep going, like I said, until we empty ourselves. And when you, when you begin to live life knowing that you as a gift, or you have no use to yourself. Your use is for the people receiving, you know. So life lived is about people. It's about who you blessed, who you, you helped, 
somebody needs the next level they need to stand on your your tie or your shoulder to get there it's it's very necessary you understand that role and allow people sometimes to use you as it were to get to because at the end of the day it's the betterment of humanity and the then, kingdom of god well normally it will end by you just saying thank you but i think you know one verse of a song to our people i think will go down very well a verse yeah. not just a chorus a verse Wow. <laughs> a verse or a verse in the chorus? A verse in the chorus. Anything, anything that. Okay. More than a song, more than a song, I give to you. Oh, more than a song, more than a song, I give to you. I give my heart, my life. My own, I give you me. <laughs> well, I would have helped, but I would have absolutely ruined your <laughs> interview. So I just had to keep quiet and soak it in. <laughs> Folks, Danny, thank you so much. It's a privilege That's to been. be here. Enjoy this conversation. I'm sure my viewers are. You know, I still remember you in shorts back in school, you know. <laughs> Until I come to you with another personality, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you, thank Bless you, thank you. you. I enjoyed the interview.